How you doing? Okay, we're ready to start day three. Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Tyler Booker. Great. Thank you all for being here today. So. Okay, we're going to open up to questions. Who has one? George here on the front row. George T. Uh, KVTV here in Dallas. Uh, so I've heard that you were one of the most effective leaders during the staff transition um, with Coach DeBoer. And I wanted to know, what do you think helped stabilize a locker room during the period of change? Togetherness really helped stabilize the locker room in the period of change. And we definitely feel a, the tightest knit group is right now since my past three years of being here just because we've been through an experience together. I'm not going to say a traumatic experience, but we've, we've been through something together. So we can all look at each other, no matter what we're going through, like, okay, this guy stayed when it was hard. This guy stayed when it was hard. And other guys have left because it was easy for them. But, like, we're looking at each other in the locker room, like, okay, this is my brother. He stayed here for me. Front row here on the left. New Haven in the house. Yes, sir. Good morning, Tyler. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Good. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Tyler, uh, the offensive line, it's like a chorus line. So how do you stay in step together to improve, you know, last year where they had a lot of sacks? I know you're looking to improve on that point. Well, we've definitely been taking a lot of um, taking a lot of time to work on our pass protection individually, and we've been also taking a lot of sets together as well because there was a lot of um, transition in the offensive of line. People were moving around in different spots. So now that we have some guys playing next to each other, we got three returning starters, and we've really been just been focusing on working together, even without the coaches, on our free time just because that's how – that's how bad we want to be great. That's how bad we want it. And while we did fall short when it came to pass protection last year, we're going to build upon our run game last year because I feel like we had a very effective run game last year. Stay on the front row. Chase Goodred with the Tuscaloosa News. Tyler, I kind of want to go back to your first question from George. Um, in the coaching transition, right, the three guys that kind of pulled the locker room together were you and Jalen and Malachi. All three of y'all in your own individual position rooms lost guys, right? Malachi looks around, Caleb's gone. You look around, Caden Proctor's gone. Jalen looks around, Julian sayan has gone. I mean, just t walk me through those 72 hours where y'all, I assume, got together and said, we got to hold this thing down. Well, first of all, I'm the lucky one because I got my guy back. But, <laughs> <laughs> but those first 72 hours were crucial. We really – we really banded together and said, hey, like, we're going to stay here and we're, we're going to win a national championship because we, we haven't won a national championship yet. Malachi has one from his freshman year, but we want one, like, as our team. We want this to be our team. We want this to be our national championship. And we knew that we have the talent in-house in to be able to do that. We were seven points away from being a national championship. We can't lose sight of that. So we really just had to try our best to keep everybody here. But to everybody that left, we wish them the best of luck. Second rule in the aisle. Uh, Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. Oklahoma and Texas bring a storied rivalry to the SEC, but what can those fans expect out of other rivalries in the conference? Can you tell me a little bit about the Iron Bowl, and what can those fans see out of rivalries, other rivalries in the SEC? Yeah, yes, they have, they have a great rivalry, the um, Red River rivalry, but the, the SEC has some great ones as well. You have the Iron Bowl, of course, us playing Tennessee. You have the Egg Bowl with Ole Miss and Mississippi State, so – this is a this is a conference built off tradition, and we're we're blessed to have two story programs in this conference to really make it better. Left side, second row. Camder, WAFF 48 in Huntsville. Kind of a fun question for you. You know, the Olympics are coming up. I was just wondering if you were to be an Olympian and you are an Olympic team, which team do you think you would be a part of, or what sport would you play? I would do track and I would throw. So actually, up until the eighth grade, I threw shot put, discus, and javelin. And I was pretty good in shot, putt, and discus. But in Javelin, I won regionals for um, the Northeast. So I think if, if I wasn't playing football, I'd be out there heading to Paris soon. <laughs> right side, fourth row. Hey, man, Ben Bobick, Local 3 News in Chattanooga. You guys don't get too many recruits from the Chattanooga area, but Amari Jefferson's a guy that, that, that's coming in this year for you guys. Do you, you see this sort of a special playmaking ability he has, and, and you see him maybe separating from the pack and potentially contributing on, on the team this fall or in the future? Definitely. Amari and a bunch of other guys have come in r ready to work, and that's why I come in this class. Like, these guys don't complain. These guys are looking for ways to get better. Like, for example, Will Sanders, he's in my office in my room. He, every day after practice, hey, hey, book, how do I do on this? How do you do this? How do you do that? They're just so willing and ready to learn and um, I'm very excited to be able to really teach and pour into those guys this year. 
right side and then pass it forward. Uh, Dan Peck, ESPN 1067 in Auburn. What, what can you say are the biggest differences between an offseason uh, with head coach Nick Saban and an offseason under Kalen DeBoer? And, and what's, what's similar about their approaches? Uh, there wasn't much different. The only thing that was really different uh, schedule-wise, we had a few practices before spring break, and I feel like that really helped just because we were able to go over the break with some practice that was under our belt. We knew to, what to expect. Obviously, the practice schedule was different, but the same intensity. We still have fourth quarter. We still had a lot of walkthroughs. We still did everything to prepare for this upcoming season. And the things that were similar, like I just said, that intensity, we're still playing Bama football. That Bama standard hasn't changed. Right side on the aisle, please. Yeah, Tyler, Evan Kamiko, Pig Trail Nation. Uh, last season in the Arkansas-Alabama game, Landon Jackson, three and a half sacks. What do you remember about going against him that day and, and in the Arkansas game in general? Um, Landon Jackson had a really great game that, um, that day. He's a great player. And, um, yeah, I wish him a great year. Left side on the aisle. Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. Kind of like the question uh, two questions ago, the difference with Saban and DeBoer. A lot of people saying a little bit more relaxed with media. It's more wide open. How do you as a leader keep your team responsible for this is Bama standard? I wouldn't say that it's more relaxed. I feel like he, Coach, Coach DeBoer, he lets the media in, media in a little bit more, but the standard is the standard. On the field, off the field, in the classroom, on the microphone. So the standard is the standard. You, you're going to represent your family and yourself and the team, most importantly, in the best way possible. I'm sorry, left side. Jake Stanza, WBRC in Birmingham. What do you think of your former coach, Coach Saban, picking Texas and Georgia to play an SEC title game? Is that some early rat poison for this group? Not necessarily. Like You really can't pay attention to things this early in the year. We have about six weeks until the season starts, and I really don't deal in hypotheticals. He taught me that, so <laughs> he'd be glad to hear me say that. On the aisle, third row. Tyler, Joe Gaither, BamaCentral.com. What do you think the uh, change to morning practices will do for the team? Uh, uh, and how do you think that's going to maybe uh, help, help this year, get, getting ready for this year? I think morning practices will definitely help because we're going to be able to practice in the morning and go to class. And then in the afternoon, we're going to have some more time. We'll have more time to really recover, get ready for the next day watch film, meet with our coaches. It's just more time on the back end of the day because when we had afternoon practice, you only had so much time before you had to go to study hall, eat, go to sleep, get ready for the next day. So I definitely feel like morning practices are going to be a, a great change for us. Left side again on the aisle. I uh, want to ask about the 2023 uh, Iron Bowl, uh, that final drive. At, at, any, at any moment, did, uh, did doubt creep in or your, your, your most uh, vivid memories of, uh, of, of those, those last couple of plays? My, those last couple of plays, I was just thinking about scenarios of how we would win. Like, doubt never creeped into my mind. And I think that's just the way that I'm wired. Like, I feel like as long as there's time on that clock, we have a chance to win. It doesn't matter what's going on. And if you let doubt creep in your mind, you're, you're not a real competitor. You're not a true competitor. You have to believe in yourself before anybody else believes in you. So as a leader on that offense, I had to believe the whole time because if a guy seen me with my head down, pouting, talking about, like, oh, man, we lost the game, what is that going to do, do to everyone else? So that whole time, I'm thinking of ways we can win this game, how I can perform, and how I can do my job to the best ability to help my team win. Left side, front row. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. I feel like Jalen has the potential for a Heisman year. What, what do you see in him and his growth, and what are your expectations for him this season? Uh, I'm, I'm very blessed to be able to play with Jalen. Jalen's a, a great quarterback, but an even better leader. So him being there for us the whole time, and he's a person that I leaned on during the transition as well. So I just expect a, a great season out of Jalen and us as an offensive line. We're going to give him the time he needs, the holes he needs, whatever he needs in order to be great and do his job to the highest ability. Final question back here on the left. Max Cohan, Way 31. Tyler, I know you've had some time to process it now, but I'm wondering how that last play of the Rose Bowl is still sitting with you and if it's fueling you to this point. Definitely the, the whole Rose Bowl. It's not just the last play. It's definitely fueling us to this year. We, we understand we fell short, and we were, we were so close to our end goal. And we're going to let that drive us this year, but we're, we're not going to dwell on it too long. We've got to look forward to this upcoming season. But that's, um, the Rose Bowl is something that we talk about as far as, like, whenever, whenever you don't feel like working hard, just think we didn't work hard enough in, hard enough in that game. Tyler, thank you very much. Good job. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. Roll Tide. Thank you.